My name is Sifu John Funk, and I'm going to be teaching you the Bakyun Chetong fist set, which means white ape exits the cave. This set is considered an intermediate level form and has involved a quite a change up in direction, uses a variety of open and closed hand techniques, and employs throws. Throughout this set, I would advise you to practice the moves individually as I teach them to you. And when you've memorized and learned the set, then practice the moves slowly to gain the understanding. Practice them then once you've gained that at medium speed so that you'll be able to put in some body power and put in the flow of the application. And then when you've mastered that level, then be prepared to practice at a quick speed to make sure that your coordination and your application of the set is, is, is okay. So with your permission and with your indulgence, I will show you the form step by step, show different angles so that you clearly understand and see the moves and the understanding and application of each form. Thank you. Okay, we're going to begin to learn a set called Bakun Chetong, which means white ape exits the cave. Now, in Chinese martial arts, they apply a lot of flowery or fancy names to it, but usually there's one element in the form which was represented by the name, and that's in the first movement as I step into it. Before we get to that, let me describe to you how we do the opening of the form and the breathing mechanism involved and why we do that. Now, in this set, we start from this position and go down the gym and work our way back. And we always start in performance to your left going to your right, okay, or to my left. So we start from this position and then the beginning of the form, we start here, attention position, and we flick by our pants like that, or by our thighs like that. Flick by and breathe in, bring it up, breathe out, so bring it down to that angle there, and breathe in again. Now let me show you that particular sequence in this position so you can see where the arms go. We flick by, bring it up, breathe out, breathe in again, and we're ready to begin the set. Now in this, there is a martial application to this particular sequence, and that is from here, we flick by, if somebody were to kick up my lower area, I would flick and maneuver the kick out very quickly, very efficiently. So we're practicing that. As the hand comes up and pushes down, this angle that is created in my arm is the angle you would use to block with. Fingers out of the way, the elbow's in the right position, and it would be used to block. So from here, we flick by, bring it up, and then we press down with a little bit of tension in the arm. Press down as we're breathing out and breathe in. What this does is it allows you to oxygenate the system. It allows the blood flow to increase a little bit and gets you prepared both physically and your lungs and also your mental state to get ready to do the form. Now, from this position here, we look to the left, we step out and trap an uppercut. We open the hip, we have a uh, hill climbing stance, and we uppercut this way in that position. I'll show you just from this angle. From here, you look out left, trap, and uppercut, using the body power this way. Now, with my helper, Steve, I'm going to show you the application of this movement. Now, Steve will have and make a fist and throw a punch out, and as I step, I trap it, at the elbow here, controlling it, and throw the uppercut. Now, I may throw the uppercut to the nose, or if his body position is a little different, I may throw it up to his throat here like this, or whatever target is available in this position. And I would like to describe to you, just bear with me for a moment, I would like to describe to you that this uppercut position is if you take the fist and you rotate the elbow down, that is the uppercut position. The difference is just simply the position of the elbow. So if you have a punch that goes straight or uppercut goes up, it's still coming with the body power. And then through the whole set, you apply and use that kind of uh, technique. 
Now, the next move from here comes up and grabs, attacks the wrist and elbow, kicks, and then throws the opponent. Looking at it from this angle, from here, you come up, grab, kick, hook, and throw. Now, what this is, is a position where I grab his wrist here with that kind of grip. You can see, look closely, my fingers are apart, my wrist is straight, and I'm grabbing this way, and I grab into this part here, and that makes his hand rendered less useful, and I grab, and there's a spot in here, and I grab this way, and I try to maneuver the arm to break the elbow at the same time, kick to the side of the leg with what's called a front side kick. Now, in this sequence where you lead to the throw, is if this is not effective, or he's bent his elbow, and he lifts his leg by bringing his knee straight up and steps back, then I step in and throw him down. Now, you can use this throw on the inside or the outside of the leg. It's applicable to both. So, once more for review, from here, I grab, kick, and throw. The next sequence has me grabbing and throwing the punch. Now, this position you very commonly see in martial arts, where they, some, and some people call it a reverse punch or a rear side punch, the secret aspect to this one and what makes it work is the fact that you grab and pull the person. Now, from here, um, I'll put the other side forward. From here, we have this, make a fist, this person punching out here. And I reach out and grab the wrist and pull and, and throw the punch, and that's what makes it work. Now, if I have pulled properly, his head turns sideways, I can strike to the temple area or side of the jaw, and I can create, thank you, I can create tremendous knockout punching ability. So from there, I pull it right back, I pull him down as I pull this back to throw the punch. Then from there, my next movement is there in a horse stance. Looking at it from this angle, from here, I step down, and here's how you create power in this maneuver. From here, you step in slightly and throw your heels up this way so that when you throw, you have a slight lean to the punch, hand is on guard, and you punch. And if you look, you can see the angle of my punch correctly, a little bit of angle here. So you have this knuckle and this knuckle involved, and then thirdly, this knuckle involved. So from this position in the punch, put the other leg forward. From here, if he blocks my punch here underneath, then I grab this one pull it over and I can throw my punch in like that, okay? So carrying on with the sequence of the form, I've come to this stage and I'm going again going to trap an uppercut. It's the same application I just described to you with the, with the uppercut on this side. I only do it from this side. So from here, I trap, trap the elbow and uppercut. The next sequence leads me to hook and turn and break the elbow standing in a in a twisting horse stance with a leg in behind for stability and balance. My body upright here in this position. So I demonstrate with my, my helper here. I have blocked this punch, and my, this is my side that I have forward. I'm blocking with my lead hand. So I grab and attack the elbow. That's the technique I've just worked with. Let me take a moment of your time just to describe how this mantis hook works. In this position, I turn the hand this way, hook the last three fingers back, and put my thumb to, between these two joints here. So I hook it back this way. It's a very efficient way to grab. If I can have my helper here. When the punch comes out and I deflect it, and I hook it like this, I hook with the last three fingers very quick. This grab is OK, but it's not as fast as a man's hook. And I want to be able to quickly come in and break the elbow before he retracts his hand back from the punch. Now, thank you. Let me just review that movement in, the, in another angle for you. From this uppercut, I hook and bring it in to break it. The next sequence from this position will go with your hand here, down, and back, and back strike there. Now, this sequence has a number of applications. Um, if I could have you here for a second. From this position, you, you go to punch me on the rear side. I bring it down. I step in, and some in, in one application, it's, it's simply a push or shove. Another application has it where he punches off this side, I bring it down, he tries, to, he tries to get back from me, I step in and I back fist off here. So if you look at the, review the sequence again, from here, I step down, figure eight movement, 
back fists. And in this position, because my opponent's getting away from me, I come down and there's the application. There's the, the stance. I, I crouch down. Look at it from this angle, from here. I step down and move. And there's my body power. Step up into the technique like that. Okay. From this technique here, no, from this technique here, I turn and block a kick. Step down, trap the elbow, and uppercut. Now this uppercut is the same application I showed you before, but with the kick, if I could have your help here, come around this side for me. When I turn, I get a round kick from the back leg there, and then he punches. I step in and trap and uppercut. Okay? Now depending on where the angle his body's in, if his angle of his body is quite turned, I turn my, my punch up this way. If his angle is down, I turn it up this way. Okay, thank you. Now in this sequence in the form, we have this position here. We have one, block the kick, trap, uppercut. Two, block the kick again. Now you raise this leg up to protect yourself. If the kick comes lower than you anticipate, you have something to protect yourself with. If your block doesn't, you know, comes in lower, you can still block the kick. Look in this angle from here. See where the, the, the knee is in front of my solar plex? Foot is over in front of this knee. It protects my lower body area. So just to review, you came one step in, uppercut. Two step in, uppercut. Now the sequence going back towards this, our starting point back this way. From here goes again, block, step down, trap, and strike this way. Hook and strike this way. Now these are palm strikes. For this palm strike here, using the palm heel of the hand, and the palm heel of the hand to block the elbow, and strike at the nose or some area in the face. Now I'll have Steve come over here. Now, he throws this back leg kick. Put your leg back for me, Steve. He throws this back leg, which I block, and then he punches, and I trap and attack the elbow, hitting the joint, and then, depending on what target's available, maybe the nose or the collarbone or side of the neck or to the temple area, even if he bends right down, I can do it to the top or the center of the head. Thank you. Now, in this sequence, from the locking the kick, I block down here, strike here. This hook here, if I can have your help, if I have blocked here and here and he blocks my hand, then I pull away and strike to the side of the head. Okay, just like that. Thank you. So from here, we hook and use the open hip body power, and bang this way, and strike with this part of the knuckle side of the head. The sequence then continues up, down, and it repeats itself here. The next sequence, going in the right order of the form, look, it turns, and comes here, this way. When you turn, when you turn and your, your hands are in this position, you turn, you look, you step up and grab this way. And completing this sequence is this move here. Now, I could have Steve over here for me, so you can see clearly. When I, when I am in this position and I turn, he is throwing this punch straight up at me here, which I grab and try to break the elbow by pulling it in. And if he pulls back and neutralizes his elbow, then I come up and strike in to the head. Just like that. Thank you. So, let's just review one more time. From here, I look, I come up, and strike. Now remember that when you strike this way, your hands stay stationary, and this hand comes up. You do that so that you have full power and full fluidity so that you will not have uh, to go stiff or to go off balance when you do the technique. So we are in this position. We come here and there. The next movement will go there and block or strikes down. This is not a block, but a low strike. Let me illustrate what I mean. From this maneuver here, if I come up and 
my, my, uh, my opponent ducks my blow, then what I do is I come down and strike in on the knee. Okay, let me change the angle for a little bit. Bring it around this way. And put this leg forward for me. From here, I came up and he ducked. So then what I do is I come down and I strike in right in that spot there. There's a spot right there. Causes the knee to collapse and it's very painful. So, thank you. Just to review again. From here we come around, grasp, break the elbow up and down here. The next sequence from that, from that maneuver in the form goes from here, goes back fist and use the hip power. You have to grab, back fist, kick, jump back, one, two, three. And here's where you put the body power in the technique. Now there's a whole series here that works to, in tandem or together. Now from this technique, if I could have Steve over here for a second. If in this technique he moves back from me and, and I miss his leg and he punches and I trap, I back fist, I back fist to the side of the head, trapping the arm close to the elbow, back fist. And if he blocks that and then I try to pick up and kick his solar plex or his groin and what he does, if I'm successful, obviously I make the technique work, but if I'm not and he blocks with his leg, he presses in on me and comes forward and attacks with, his, with a punch. One. Again, two, and I strike to the side of the face or whatever target is available. So the sequence goes from here to back fist, kick, jump back, one level, pull it straight back, two level, pull it straight back, slight, and use your body part for the strike. Now this hand is on guard. Each time this comes back from one, two, to three, it's on guard. Okay. From this position here, the next movement goes forward. From here, comes up to there. Now this position is the same application as this one, only instead of trying to just break the elbow, you're trying to, so forth. You're trying to not only break the elbow, but you're trying to knee him at the same time. So what we have is a tactic that attacks the knee with a knee to the lower rib or the solar plex and also break the elbow. So the movement goes from here, grab to there. The next sequence comes if he neutralizes that. From here, no, wait a minute. From here, I turn, block down, and kick. Now from this position, if I come up and he swats my knee aside with this hand, this hand here, jumps around, and tries to hit me with a back fist. As he does that, as he does that, because he's knocked my knee around, I can come around, kick the knee, and come down and block the arm. Okay? So, in this next sequence, following this position here, I grab and throw the punch. Throw the punch on the rear side. Grab my partner, or my opponent by his wrist, as I've described you in the earlier set, and throw the punch. I look on this side, I grab again, and throw the punch. In this sequence, what I'm doing is I'm going from grabbing and throwing the punch on this side to turning first, grabbing, throwing this side, and then throwing a low punch or horse dance punch. Now let me just show you the application here so you have a clear idea of what we're doing. In this one, he's, he's, I've, he's had a punch here. I grabbed it and throw the punch, which he blocks. Then I grab this and throw my low punch in here, into the lower rib area, this lower floating rib area here. Okay. Following that technique, which is here, I trap and uppercut. The application of that we've already gone through. Just remember to trap the elbow when you uppercut. From here, we come up and clear, step in, and throw. This technique allows me to get underneath and uproot my opponent, as well as hit him in the lower rib area and cause him to fall and hit his head. Now let me demonstrate what I'm talking about. This side forward, left foot forward. From this punch, no, no, you have the same leg forward. There you go, there you go. From this hand punching here, I deflect up as I step in to lock the leg here. And when I strike this way and my hand comes this way, I pull, check the leg, and do it all at once. Now, right now I've hold on to my partner's, uh, my opponent's uh, uh, wrist, but in reality I would let this go. 
And when he does, he falls back and hits his head and will become injured. From this position here, I turn, grab, and punch again. Grabbing with the, the wrist I've described like this, grabbing onto the partner's wrist, punch like this, and then punch down again into low horse stance, and again, uppercut. Okay? That sequence is quite similar to what we've just described. But let me just review. As we're going back in the right direction of the set, from this position here, I come in, grab, punch, low punch, and I step in slightly, turn my heels out to get the power, step up, and I pull my foot over a little bit so I'm, I'm, my hips can turn, and I uppercut again, and again step through for a low strike or a low throw, just the one we just did a moment ago. So from here, from this position, I step through and do a backhand strike or a, or a back palm strike using these knuckles here, but the hand is fairly relaxed, fairly loose, and hits in a kind of a snapping or wave-like action. When I do this technique, I trap or hit the elbow here to cause the, an injury or some, some uh, impact on the elbow joint. Hit that there and strike through to hit somewhere on here up in the temple area, or if he turns more, I can strike through and hit down here on the neck on that section there. So from this section here, I then step behind my foot, clear, and throw using this hand position to grab the wrist and to attack the shoulder as I throw. Now, in this one, if I can have you on this side, from, from this side I have tried to attack which he blocks. So I come up and grab the wrist, step behind, and I attack the shoulder and throw. That way. Okay. Okay. Now, from this sequence here, as I step back, and throw, I reach up and punch, and this time palm heel strike. Or instead of using this fist, I use a technique which is like in this angle here, and uses the palm here to make the, com the impact to somebody's lower ribs. So it's a similar sequence, but application is the same except a different hand. So from this throw, I step in, grab, throw the punch, backhand. The following sequence is the one we just did earlier, except it's done from a different side. So from this position, I back fist, kick, jump away, one, two, three. Here's my strike out of my hip, power of my strike, okay? That's the same sequence or action we did before. And leading from that, we'll go grab and punch. And this one I'd like to do in this angle for you to see the position of uh, of, of my maneuver here. From this position, I grab on the center line, punch the center line, but I pull it off this angle like this. If I could have Steve here to help me, come on this side. Using this technique in application, the, uh, he's blocked my, my forward strike, my left, with my left hand still in guard. I grab the wrist and I pull suddenly to throw the punch here. Because I pull that way, I can hit the side of the jaw or the side of the head and use my fist to create a knockout situation. And it's this pulling action this way that causes that angle for me to, to use the technique appropriately. Okay, thank you. So from here, I then go by shuffling slightly forward. I strike with my hand up this way. And as I described to you before, my hand is stationary, my hand comes up to it, and it allows me to do a full power technique without coming off balance and without losing our, my technique because it becomes stiff to slow it down. From, from this technique, I do what's called a a la choy movement or hook grasp strike. And from here, I hook, grasp, and strike. This technique is quite prevalent in, in the seven star praying mass system. It's one of the 12 character principles. In fact, it leads out those 12 with the first three characters of hook, grasp, and strike. And what's important to remember here is that in this sequence, your hook and leads off and pulls the, the, the arm away or deflects the punch away, but the grasp and the strike are done together. So they're done, they're done at the same time. So you actually have two movements. You have hook or deflection, controlling movement, grasp and strike. The next movement is the same as we've done before where I grab, punch. So I'm grabbing the arm, the attacking arm as it comes to grab, punch, low punch again. And we finish the form with this maneuver here. 
This double figure eight and into a man's hand is a hand trapping sequence. If I have my partner here, when my partner attacks with this fist, close your fist here, this fist out here like this, I come up and deflect and strike towards his eyes. That's the, that's the first part of this maneuver. So as he punches, I come here, and when he blocks that with his other hand, then I trap and strike to the eye here, and if he blocks that one again, I then come back and attack the elbow and make an elbow lock. So the sequence from this low horse stance turns left, one, two, double hook, bring your left foot up, breathe in, breathe out, and you finish the set. Just one more time for review from this angle here. I have finished my low horse stance punch. I look, I come back, one, two, double figure eight, close, and down, and finish. And that concludes the fist set, Bakian Chetdong, which means white ape exits the cave. I thank you for your attention and patience, and please practice hard. And I'm going to be teaching you today about a broadsword form in the seven star premas kung fu system called Yun Qingdo. This broadsword form was named after a very famous swordsman in China called Yun Qing. The actual name of the set translated into English means uh, yellow swallow broadsword form. This broadsword form is typical of all northern style sets and it, is, it, it fights against a spear and its tactics are all based on that. Just a little introduction to the broadsword. The broadsword is held in the handle position with your right hand. And these flags that you see on the back are for two purposes. One, if your hand in real combat became bloody or sweaty, you could use them to wipe them off. Quite a practical application. And the other is as the blade moves around, it causes a slight confusion to the opponent to know exactly where it is. So it acts as a bit of a, a, bit of a camouflage to the movements, as it were. In this set, in Qingdo, I advise you to learn each movement step by step. Practice them individually at a slow, measured pace. Then when you feel confident, speed them up a little bit, try to put the body power cut from the blade into it. As you learn each section, keep practicing them over and over. Do them at a medium pace as you become accustomed to them. And then you can do them with, along with all the moves you learn the whole set. Now, another tip is to learn the form in sections. Do a few moves, get c confident with that. Then go through s another section and piece it together. So you're not trying to remember all the time, but, in, but then that part is already learned. If you look in the applications part, you can clearly understand why the mo weapon moves the way it does. And I'm sure that you'll become accustomed to the form in a, in a matter of a short period of time. OK, let's carry on. And good luck and have some fun learning the set. Thank you.
To learn the Ying Qingdo set, or broadsword set in Seven Star Prey Mass, I'm going to take you through each movement step by step. We're going to start in this position here and go through the set and we will come up and we will go in that direction and back this way. This is classically the maneuvers you use in this set, or any set in Seven Star Prey Mass, to start to your left and move to your right. If you were the audience, that's how you'd always perform the set. Okay. In the opening moves of the, of the broad, single broadsword set, we start out in this position and we do a breathing opening, which goes flick by the pants, come up, level to the shoulder, push down, and up here. Now what this is doing, and let me show you from this angle, is you're breathing in, breathing out, breathing in. What's actually transpiring here is that you're preparing your body and getting uh, the system oxygenated, creating a little blood flow, and this will allow you to have the opportunity to prepare the body. Now, when you do this, you're actually applying a martial technique. If somewhere were to attack my lower level, I would flick quickly to get rid of it. And that's the technique that you're practicing here. It flicks, and it just flicks by the thigh or pants. Comes up in here, and this pushes down into a blocking position. If you look at that, the hand, the fingers out of the way, the turn in this, the elbow is slightly bent. This is a position to block with. So the opening of the set brings you to that stage. Now from here, the set will have you move out this way. This allows you to block the weapon and strike with the butt of the broadsword at the same time. And then you step forward by pulling the weapon away and stepping up. Now your opponent changes direction and moves over here where you look. And you bring your hand up to check the weapon and strike at the same time with the fist. The weapon comes up this way, you slide back, and in this one you pick the coins out of your pocket and throw them into the face of your opponent. And that's what this movement goes. So from here, it's a strike, deflect the weapon away. Strike, pick the coins, throw. The opponent then reacting to that. You chamber as, the, as your opponent gets set to attack you, and you simultaneously kick and punch. And that allows you to punch the face, which they worry about, and kick to, to connect. So kick, and then you jump in, trap the weapon aside, and punch again. Jump in, and strike. In this maneuver, it's important to remember that from here, as you came, as you brought the weapon away, as you came, you punched. You then bring the weapon away again, grab the broadsword, deflect the spear or weapon aside, and strike in this way, catching with the edge of the broadsword here. From this position, you strike down in that angle. Strike down, position yourself in a cat stance. This is called a ready position, and you see it in this angle. My prey mantis hand is this way, which is done, and let me allow you to, allow me to illustrate. It's done by hooking the last three fingers back and pushing these, in between these two knuckles that way. It's a hooking mechanism used against a weapon or an arm. From this position here, I then run in that direction this way and turn and cut into a ready position. From there, from this ready position, I step forward and at the same time block and cut. Now when I move my blade around this way, in the, that part of the form, as I come around this way, I use this hand here to check against, and that allows me full power in the weapon. And it also, it also illustrates or tells me, in this part of the weapon I'm grabbing the spear, or the attacking weapon, controlling it while I cut in. It's important to remember that in this cut, which goes this way, and all cuts that go this way, is that the body is doing the action, turning, and causing power in the weapon. But it is the wrist that helps culminate the maneuver. So from this position, um, as I came around here, back this way, or when I come in this way in the set, these are called a neck flower. And it's important to remember that the broadsword must travel very tightly to the back when you do it this way, or very tightly to the back when you come this way. The blade becomes absolutely vertical and comes around. Now what's going on here is that from, from this position I'm in the ready stance. 
I come along, away from the spear, jump, cut at my opponent, and bring it around to ready position. Following that in the sequence, when I step in here, I'm blocking. But what, what's important to remember is that this block goes smoothly into a cut. So I block and cut. Now, following this sequence in the form from here, I then cut in what's called a bilateral movement. The open hand, which represents the blade, will move out this way from that movement. Now, this is the cut. From here, there's my cutting action, but there's my bilateral position. Now, in the next mover maneuver, the, the spear comes from this angle, which I turn and cut this way. Now, this movement I'll show you in a different angle. From here, turn, raise my leg to protect my lower area, bring my spear up and around, turn and cut. This hand coming up deflects the weapon, attacking weapon away, and allows me to cut in the middle. And the cut turns the wrist this way. If you observe yourself or another person doing the broadsword this way, it is incorrect. It must turn on the wrist. There is the cutting action. That cut there. When you finish the maneuver, and again I illustrate in the correct position, when you come up here and finish the maneuver, you must use this torquing and body position tied together. Again we come into the ready position. Again we jump out, turning and cutting. It's identical to what we did before. Again we cut out here. Now the form changes into a new routine from this repetition part. Cuts down and does what we call a stealing the stance step. From this position, I cut and cut again down this way. Following up, I come closer to my opponent in my ready position. Since my opponent has decided to attack from the back, I turn slice and ready position again. Now look at it from this angle. From here, I jump to ready position. Okay? So from my ready position, I bring the saber up and cut. Now look at it from this angle. Here, I bring it up, protecting my lower area, receding from the attack of the weapon, blocking, bring it around, this comes up as my cut comes through. Okay. So we've come to this section of the form. I look in this new direction I'm going to go in, and I pull another bilateral cut position. My palm out there. If you look, I have, I have adopted this position, palm and the blade. The arms should be parallel. Okay. So from this position, I now bring my hand back here. This allows me to deflect the weapon aside and trap the weapon as I cut up. This is the upward motion. You turn it up this way, like that. So from this position, I came here to deflect into a cat stance, slightly twisting, came up to cut. Now, the next maneuver allows me to deflect down, turn the weapon, and bridge or, or, or uh, support the weapon in a downward cut. So from here, I turn, downward cut, protect or hold the weapon in a cat stance. Then, let me show you just from another angle. From this bilateral cut, came across the deflect, cut to there. Okay. And continuing the weapon set from here, I now do another neck flower movement in which I block, cut. Cut again to ready position. Jump again this way, but this time I go into a ready position in a stealing the stance step, cross step, as I cut in bilateral motion into another ready position. Let me show it to you from another angle. I came from this position, checked, cut, check, or support the weapon, block and cut, came to my ready position, my, my opponent is attacking, I jump away, cut, and get into another ready position. Cross step, Cut, ready position. Okay. Now, 
continuing the form in the right direction, in the right maneuvers, we, we are in a ready position. This blade is straight up and down. We cut and ready. From this ready position to our next maneuver, we come over with the blade to catch it there. This maneuver brings it and allows me to cut and to check with my arm so I can have full power down the cut. And this checking on the arm also means to a, a, attach myself to their weapon wherever possible. So from this ready position, I cut and again bilaterally cut. So it's identical to the same position we did before. Hand is out, level. The next series goes one to block, two to block, stealing the stand step, and another bilateral cut backwards, coming up this way. Continue to look in that position. So again, the sequence for review. From the ready position, chop, again cut bilaterally, one, two, Sealing the stand step to get closer without them realizing it, then cutting. The next maneuver has you come up, side down. From here, you come up. Now this allows you to cut up in the practice and hitting the hand so you don't come off balance. It also means that you grab the spear and you cut the arm or the wrist holding the spear. So cut up, and then your footwork changes place. As you do that, you change and hook and cut down in this position, using your mantis hand back here. So from this position, you, you have an angle this way. You then change to an angle this way. Slight side change by the footwork. Footwork doesn't move you forward or back, it just keeps you changing in a different angle. So from here, it hooks and cuts. Now you recede into a reverse hill climbing stance. And as you bring this back, you support the hand, and this now is a defensive posture. And you cut up in an uncommitted forward stamp position by balancing with the leg up here. It's important to have it in this position. This is the right position for that. And you cut up this way. Again, supporting the blade to make this kind of a strike. Following that, you cut on this side using this leg up, and again, this position to balance your tactic. So you're coming down this way, and you're not committing to a forward motion. You're just simply quickly changing over. And you change it by going here to here. Now, from this maneuver that we just did, the next tactic changes ranges. It makes you move in a, can, a little more distance. From here, the blade comes around and out, upside down. It's a poking motion. And let me illustrate from this angle. From here, it jumps down, stealing the stand step, starts out here and comes up. And what happens here is you catch the spear or the weapon and strike underneath from that way. Now following that maneuver is a series of jumping that, that takes place, going forward against an opponent. And it's important to remember that, the, that, the, that as you go to jump, there are two twirls in the in the broadsword like that, okay? So, we have gotten to this position here in the form. And this comes through twice to come down in a, in, a, in a ready position, but down below where the attacker has previously attacked. So you've been, so you've come through, cut, cut, but you've come down here, then you come up to block and cut. Now what this does, and if I can show you in the other angle, what this does is allow you the opportunity from here to block as you come forward, turn and cut, and what happens is your hand comes in this way and you catch it against this hand, like that, okay? So what we have is a maneuver that's, that ends here and one more cut and low stance stepping forward Receding, blocking, cut to there. So as the form, let's just review that so we don't get confused. We have the low stance on the first one. Jump up, strike, again cut, down, step, cut. Again, making sure you get the wrist action. This deflecting the weapon away. From this position here, we again cut down, 
And as after the cut, you're in a ready position. The opponent is now going to attack you. You jump again, turn to ready position. Again, step forward, cut. Again, jumping forward to ceiling to stand step. And this time, you turn and deflect and step. Having the broadsword up in another ready position here in this cast. It's a totally receded position. You cut to there, cut, ready again, and around to block, and cut. Again, chop, again to here, we to our ready position. We jump away, cut to ready position. This last sequence, we come forward, trap down, okay? So from here, trap down, cut. Bring the blade up to your left hand, step back, take the coins, throw them in the opponent's face. Step back, flick, up, down by your side. And that's the end of the set. Thank you. For the application section of the Inchingdo form, and the use of this broadsword. All of the techniques in the form are applied against a spear. This is a commonplace situation for northern style weapon sets, which the Seven Star Prey Mask belongs to that group. In the old days in China, always the broadsword foot soldier would fight against a either spear holding horse mounted person or somebody on foot. So these tactics that you're learning in this set are the classical traditional maneuvers and they're against the spear. Now in this set I've taught you the maneuver around the shoulder and cut like that or around the shoulder and cut is the most important part. So when you're doing from this ready stance and this position here or you're doing from this position here, you're cutting back to here, you have to remember that it's a two-fold tactic. One is that you're blocking and then going into a cut. Now I'll have my, my helper here push the spear out towards me, pokes out towards me. In that position that he pokes out from my ready position where he wants to attack my vulnerable spot, I simply bring my sp saber up, bring it around, step in, and cut his hand, supporting hand. So the tactic, bring it back please, bring it back. The tactic of having the broadsword come up and around and cut is using that particular approach. When the spear is poked towards me, I block it, step through, and cut. Okay? And I cut whatever is available or closest to me. Because if I can cut his wrist, or if conversely, if I want to cut his knee, or any part of his extremities, then he cannot fight me anymore. Please put it back. Can't put it anymore. There is a tactic you'll observe in the form that allows me to step this way, and then cut back up this way. What this is doing is, I want to get closer to this person, but I don't want to do it in an awkward position. So as I step down to trap the spear, I can bring my blade up and cut this person. Now, I keep my hand out here, primarily to balance this maneuver, but I also want to be able to have this hand here available that if he counter pokes that, if I miss, I can check the weapon aside. I can use it as a deflecting action and it's used in a slapping motion. For example, in one of the maneuvers, one of the uh, parts of the form, I actually, from this cut, come back this way. So when he pokes into me, I recede and check and keep the weapon and cut up into his hand. And if you remember the section we did, it went like this. It came up and then came up this way. So it cuts into the arm. By and large, the broadsword will have a cutting action of either down, sideways, or up. In the in the and it will also cut down this way, or cut around this way. It will go in in either diagonally, horizontally, or vertically, and it will also go vertically this way. So the blade can can cut in all those sections. It can also be used. If the spear comes in, I can check the weapon and strike his hand. So if I'm holding the broadsword, I can whack the handle of it into his supporting hand. As you saw in the opening motion, like this, I'm cutting, I'm hitting it here. 
In the beginning of the form, I described to you about throwing your coins into the opponent's face. That's a classical maneuver. From this position where you came back and you went like this, this is meant to throw something in his face so I can bridge the distance and trap it away. And in the beginning of it, I punch him. If, in fact, he moves back, pulls his spear back, and it pokes again, I poke it away again. I bring it up, trap it. He comes to poke me again. I trap it up again, and I try to make a, a, a kind of a striking motion that way. So when you use the broadsword with this action, the spear is here in a high position, and I'm going into this action. I am pushing or slicing by pushing the back of the blade into my opponent's hand. Or if the blade comes in and I have deflected away and I have cut, I'm coming down this way to, to support and help the cut into the opponent's hand, like that. In this set, you'll see if I can have you move back just a little bit for me. In this set, you'll see me doing a running motion, jumping this way. What's happening is I'm on guard here, and my opponent chases me, moving towards me. And I cut around and catch him in that way. So what's happening here is that although I'm running from my opponent, I'm slicing into the opponent, bringing it back on guard. And that's the tactic there. Further to that, you'll see where I have the spear. Maybe come this way a little bit for me. There you go. I have the spear and I've tried this cut. Now if he pulls the spear back and blocks, I can then bring my blade down to cut his leg back into ready position from there. Or in the form, the actual application, it comes back like this. So I'm this position or this position or conversely, this one in the set, they're ready positions to attack or go from. And there is some distance between you and the spear attacker. As we went through the set, you saw a maneuver which goes this way. And what that means is, I have tried to make an attack which he's pulled back from. And then he comes back in to attack my middle section. I block, he pulls the spear back, I block, and I step down to attack his hand. Now this maneuver that you see in the form, which goes one, two, and step, this stance, this step position allows you to get closer than he can visualize. It allows you to sneak a little bit in. And then from here, up the cut comes in a bilateral position. In the form, we see a section which has me go one, two, back here on guard. It's really simply taking the, the, the blade and in a circling fashion, allowing me to block it this way. So when I go, when I go one, one, two, that kind of action allows me, from this position, allows me to, say, in that action, allows me to deflect, deflect down and away of my spear. The reason that I come around this way in the next section, and I come like this, and I step over in here, is that this is a quick and efficient way to move the weapon. The closer it is to the back, the quicker the blade goes. And it allows me to take my blade and never have to rechamber and cut or rechamber and cut. So you don't go like that. You simply go or go, and this action helps block whatever is attacking. Okay, that concludes the application part of our, of our lesson on the broadsword. It's important to remember that there is an, an exercise you can practice before you begin to learn the set. And that is starting from the ready position, step in and cut. Cut back into ready position. And that you can repeat to get this blade action going in the neck flower or close around by the shoulders. If you practice diligently, keep the patience up, you'll find that this is an excellent intermediate level weapon to learn and will help the rest of your Kung Fu training. Thank you very much.